my friends, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to my gigolos and gigolettes. It's me, Geo. Y'all know who the fuck it is. All right, I fucked up a video I put out yesterday. I thought I double checked and triple checked, but I guess I didn't check enough. I added the wrong introduction to the video to the video, so I didn't redo it as it's like. Um, anyway, um, I've been watching these documentaries that were produced by Viceland. <laughs> Like, the first two are free. The first two was the Chris Benoit story and stuff like that. And then, because of that, I was getting recommendations for the other Viceland documentaries. Um, but I guess I found, from what I found out when I was watching these, because, I mean, a little bit of backstory on myself. Uh, I was a indie wrestler, independent wrestler. Like, I, I know I would I'd say I did pro wrestling before, but that's not exactly... I never really... Like, to me, you're professional when that's how you make all of your money, right? That's how, that's how you sustain yourself is by being anything. Like, if you are a, if you call yourself a professional bull rider, that means you make all your money from bull riding. If you are a professional skateboarder, you, you maintain yourself, you live your life through your skateboarding money. Like, I was never a professional wrestler, you know, like, I was an independent wrestler. Like, I never got a major contract. I, you know, the, yeah, I was just a middle of the road independent wrestler from 19 to 25. I think maybe, I think I was 20. Yeah, I think I was 25 when I had my last match. And I got out because injury issues, and I knew I was never going to make it big. And I'm like, you know what? Might as well step back. It's not not for me anymore. So I step back. But made some of the best friends of my life wrestling, had some of the most fun ever doing it. Uh, every once in a while, I'm driving around, I'll recall a memory from a show, just backstage dumbass shit that always just brings a smile to my face. Um, no regrets. You know, it's, parts of it sucked. Uh, wrestling is a is a business that you, you can love with all your heart, but it will not love you back. But... Yeah, but I want to talk about the Viceland. I'm sorry, I'm over the place. Um, the Viceland documentaries. So, because of the two I watched, I kept on getting recommendations for other Dark Side of the Ring um, documentaries, and one of them was the Montreal Screwjob, talking about Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels, where Earl Hepburn, you know, said that he tapped out, and then it was just a huge, it was this huge screwdriver because. Brett did not want to lose in Canada, and that was the last night of his contract, was that, you know, whole thing. Um, and I want to just talk about something really quick, um, and this kind of got the shortest amount of, of love in that documentary, and one of my favorite, and probably my favorite wrestler of all time, Scott Hall, aka Razor Ramon, um, he said it best. He's like, this... I, okay. For those of you who don't know, if you're a wrestling fan, you watch the guard, you know what this is. Uh, a work means it's set up. You know, like if, like a work punch. If, if a wrestler punches somebody else, if it's a work punch, that means it's intended to look real, but not actually be real. Right? That's a work. Um, a wrestling match is a work. It's not real. Like, the two guys in the ring aren't trying to kill each other. If they are, that's a shoot. Okay. The Montreal screw job appears to be a shoot, but like Scott Hall said in the documentary, it's 100% of work, in my opinion. Um, because the Montreal screw job really did, it did what it was supposed to do. Okay. It gave Bret Hart his integrity. It made Vincent Mann look like the fucking, he made, it made Vinnie Mac look like the biggest fucking, you know, greedy devil in the world. WCW got their new high-priced, uh, you know, athlete. Everybody won in that situation, right? Because it, it forever made Vince the bad guy, and it forever made Bret Hart the unwilling victim. Because Bret Hart, you know, he lived and breathed wrestling. So that's what lets me know his work, too, is, like, Bret Hart's father. Because I saw this in another documentary. I think another another wrestling personality said, 
Bret Hart's father would not have allowed that. He would not have allowed Bret to not do the job to Shawn Michaels. Because it's not his promotion. WWF at the time was not run by Bret Hart. It wasn't his call to make. If the, pro if the promoter tells you you're going to do the job, you do the job. That's respecting the business. Whether whether you like the call or not, you know, like whoever on TV, whoever the champion is right now, is because that who that is who the promoter or the management or whatever, that's who they feel can sell the most tickets. That's who they feel can keep the house full. Okay? It's not because that's the most gifted athlete. It's not because that's the hardest worker. That's not the case at all. If you're if you got the strap, if you got the belt. That's because some the, the decision was made from higher up that that is the most financially well-off move is to have that person hold the belt. Right? It's the wrestling business. That's that's the whole that's that's one thing and that's that's something everyone in that documentary understands. Bret Hart understood it. Vince McMahon understood it. WCW manager understood it. Every single person understood it. That's how you know it's a work. Because for for a while, like WCW was beating WWF, WWF in ratings at that point, but for a while WWF ratings went back up because of the controversy. Okay, and I know they mentioned in the in the, in the documentary that Bret Hart going to WCW didn't really make a splash in the ratings, only because WCW had so much. I mean, they had this was before their NWO shit, but. They had such a huge roster, and it was disorganized, but it was completely a work. And here's one thing a lot of people may not understand about um, Vince McMahon, too, is, like, I know he's, I've never met the fucking guy, obviously, um, but from what I understand about Vince McMahon is, it's funny, there's a truck that says McMahon driving past me right now. What some of you have to understand is Vince, he always, he always suggested to his boys, to wrestlers, to workers, that if you can't make money here, it's not the wrong move to go make money somewhere else. You know, he never, he never motherfucked people. I don't think he publicly or, I mean, I, I obviously never talked to him privately. Um, if the grass was greener somewhere else, if there was a better offer on the table at a different promotion, which would have only been WCW, he always said, he always said, go take the money. He never, he never once would, <laughs> would be like, oh no, fuck you. You're not loyal. Like, go, 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 go fuck yourself. Like, I think he understands, you know, it's not a charity. He's a cutthroat businessman, but he's a businessman. So he knew when, because Bret Hart, was very close, was and is very close to Vince McMahon back then. So when 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 Bret Hart said, "Hey, WCW is offering me this much more pay for this less work, can you match that?" and at the time WWF WWF could not, he told him, "Go take the money. It's there. You'll be you'd be dumb to not take that money." Right. But Vince also said, like, okay, we gotta figure out a way for you to, you know, you're the champ. You gotta, you gotta get rid of that belt, which is what he had to do, because it's not, it's not Bret Hart Promotions. It wasn't Bret Hart Wrestling Federation. It was World Wrestling Federation. And Bret Hart said, I did not want to get pinned clean in Canada, or he didn't want to lose straight up in Canada. Then they had to put the idea together to make it seem like. Because Bret Hart, the, the Hart family is royalty in Canada. Um, they had to put this facade in order to make sure everybody won. And in that situation, the Montreal Screwjob, every single person won. Everybody came out winning. You had a mark. Bret Hart got to look like, you know, he, he, he was memorialized in Canada for what happened. He's a legend in Canada. Shawn Michaels, which is a much more marketable champion, got the belt. This man got to look like the fucking asshole at WCW, got their high-priced talent. Everybody won. And that's how you know it's a work. Because there's, there's no way it's such a winning situation for everyone 
if it wasn't set up that way. Or it's just a happiest accident of all time. Um, that's just my opinion. I, I, you know, there's been so much. This is literally the most talked about thing in wrestling history was that one night. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, just... I shouldn't link it because I didn't pay to watch it. Like, you have to pay to download the documentary. Um, but I, I didn't know that until, like, I actually searched for it on YouTube. Um, but it's done by Viceland. They're all really well done documentaries, I will say. I just, I feel kind of shitty for not paying for them. Um, so, uh, go look, just look up Dark Side of the Ring and, um, Montreal Screwjob. You'll find it right away. And let me know, let me know what you think. Am I crazy or not? I'm gonna go ahead and say it was a work. All right, guys. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you guys next time. Everyone, please stay safe, stay good, stay classy, stay healthy. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.